Hey, join the Final Stop Patreon. It's lit. We got dozens of hours of content. It's a whole bunch of shit. And if you're really liking the podcast, we like it a lot, you can join the Internal Affairs. It's 10 bucks a month. But you get hours, and I mean hours, of the rawest form of the Final Stop. Join the podcast. <laughs> hey, welcome back to another episode of the Final Stop Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Bridget, live from Heavy Feather Studios because the Wi-Fi in my house is down, and that is what it is. Uh, over on the other side of the country, not in his normal spot either, where it's really a survival episode this week, it's the Vampire King, King Possum, Lord Meerkat, it's Tristan Bowling. Yeah, while your Wi-Fi is down, my wifey is no longer down. <laughs> so I am over here. How long have you been sitting on that guy? <laughs> Yeah, just yeah, we're, uh, uh, we're having a road game through and through today, bud. <laughs> just across the board. I'm yeah, it's, sit on the sign to make it interesting. We don't have mic stands. It, I, I'm about like I'm puppy. about to pull the court or curtain over my shoulders and the camera. And we're gonna tell ghost stories. I'm about to do that. <laughs> Get spooky. Um, no, but we are doing we're doing a survival quiz episode today because it seemed the most correct to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me say, from the setup of both of us, I think Daniel might win the survival. Oh, <laughs> flip it on now. This fucking hunk of shit. Andrew was looking like he was ready to cry fucking right before we started recording. It's then the called sec- being a fucking professional, it's dog. It's showbiz, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're doing a survival I'm, quiz. I'll be sad off the clock, all right? But when I'm on the clock, we're going. We're zigging. We don't pay you to be sad here. Shit. We don't even pay you to be here. Tristan did it for 50 episodes. Let me do it for one, dog. <laughs> In 73, I'm still sad, big boy. <laughs> That's my secret. I'm always sad. Yeah. Uh, dun, 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 dun. If you had to, if you had to survive, if you had to survive in one spot, like one of those get dropped alone episodes, what's your least favorite terrain? Desert, forest, or like snow? Yeah. Or ocean, I, would, I guess. Like I island. would for sure say snow. Just because I've been in, like, here, and I don't. I mean, it's pretty. It's yeah. like, I like being inside, observing the snow, not outside amongst the snow. Do you know how fucked up it is to die death by freezing? In the end, you <laughs> feel like you're burning up. Niggas literally take their clothes off when they die of hypothermia. I've always frostbite. wondered this. Do you think if you're dying from hypothermia, you're, like, on death's door. You're so cold, you're just like, anything will happen. If you get gasoline and light yourself on fire, would there be a second where you'd be like, this is nice, before you're like, too hot, too hot, too hot? <laughs> like, No, because you, there... you feel hot. There's a turn. When you go from being too cold, like... Have you ever held on to something that was so cold you thought it was hot for a second? Yeah, my lyrics, my bars. Okay, here we go. Uh, no my one's bars, ever done that? My flow? Touched- I've held on to my flow. Have you ever seen my flow? It's so cold. The ice in his veins? Yeah. Yeah, dude, we saw your SoundCloud. That was episode four of this podcast. Let it die with some dignity. Uh, no, never. Actually, you should on my SoundCloud today. You sent me a video of some pretty okay rap, and then he was like, this is your SoundCloud. <laughs> No, dude, we listened to your SoundCloud. It was written bars posed as a freestyle. Do you want to also, also, do you want to hear the thing that I sent Daniel? Here is the meme that I sent Daniel that he's saying was pretty all right. Look, okay, let me preface this before you play it. You got to get into an alternative mind space. Like, like you're getting ready to watch, like, Carrot Top do comedy. Get into an alternative mind space. Are you saying you only work as an ulti kind of? In rap. I'm an an alt rapper, for sure. (laughs) You're an alt rapper? I'm an alt rapper. Yeah. You bring up a puppet and the puppet raps? Yeah. <laughs> DGB, the alternate rapper. Fuck yeah. I'll, I'll go. I'll go so this is this art. is the art that Daniel is saying. Niggas mad because they can't fuck with me. Take my glasses off. I can't even barely see. You got a six piece. Hey, can I get a piece? Got your girl in a room. She a freak. Use my debit card. I just got a room. So it's, it's it goes in the, in the alt hall of fame. It goes that guy, Ice JJ Fish, and DBG. I, was say, I think Ice JJ <laughs> produced that shit. I I completely forgot about Ice JJ Fish Ice or JJ Krispy Kreme 2012. <laughs> Do you guys oh, remember heard... Krispy Kreme 2012? What was Krispy Kreme? Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme 2012. <laughs> <laughs> It no, was just like that, this boy. It was like this borderline touched kid, just like, <laughs> just having fun. 
That kid definitely got Boston cream pied once or twice. <laughs> oh yeah. No, like uh, he, he got is his so raspberry filled. Sorry. It, it's funny because they did like a web redemption on Tosh Point oh, and it was just like him rapping, and I was just like, man, he thinks he's so cool right now. He doesn't understand. This is not. This is a joke. That guy like, thinks he's the <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's in his main character arc. This guy's getting <laughs> fucking shit on. Yeah, oh, he's damn. like, well, yo, Comedy Central gave characters. me a new record, bro. They gave me a deal, bro. I'm on Tosh.0, bro. And it's like, nah, that's a joke. <laughs> that, show's, that show's fucking great. Uh, back to survival. My not favorite, my least favorite survival place, bro, no water. That'd be my own personal hell. If you dropped me on a complete, like, ha- like a half-sustainable island. Like I would like to say. On said island and things to hunt fish with. <laughs> Bountiful fish, some sharks, no sea cucumbers, one lost Dutchman. I, no, no, <laughs> Arr, no. Is fucking. that is it's that like is that your <laughs> is that the situation that you'd prefer to be in? Like no water is deathly afraid. Just because I imagine, just you, even if you have water, like too much water is going to be. It, no matter if it's no water or too much water, you're still fucked, pal. It's not like I've seen you around like bugs. There's no way you could kill a fish, like with Wait, your hands. What do you mean you've seen me around bugs? Also, what kind of fucked up reference point is that to be like? <laughs> you know what's fucked up too is that he oh, he could only fish if he had Bud Light on the island with him, or else it's just gay. Yeah, <laughs> unless yeah, unless he's yeah, touching can... something slimy from the sea, and that shit's gay. I'm just gonna go throw rocks at a raccoon till it de- is defeated, and then eat it. <laughs> yeah, you can bring ten things with you to a desert island. Okay, well after the six pack of Bud Light, I'm left with four things. <laughs> yeah, the four from the second six pack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does a pony keg count as one thing? <laughs> you bring a Each brewery. Individual... That's my one item. That's my one yeah. item is a brewery. You could ask for a case. You can ask for a case, but they're counting each individual beer, so it's like 32 things. <laughs> no, where you really got to think, What uh, one of the things I would bring, I would ask for uh, 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 all expenses paid, th- uh, like schooling for FFA so I could grow wheat and barley. Bud Light for life, boys. You give a man Bud Light once, he gets drunk for a night. You teach a man how to make Bud Light. He gets drunk. For He's to sli- he tries to pet a shark. I'm glad you learned something from all that Christian schooling we taught you. Uh, yeah, dude. Just me on an island, fucked up off Bud Light, mistaking a basking shark for a tiger or a tiger shark for a basking shark. Yeah, just boats coming up to save you, and then just being shucked away by homemade spears, being like, "Get the fuck out of here! You're trying to invade my land." <laughs> just fighting back. Ba- fighting back everyone trying to help you they're like jesus christ aboriginals have taken over the island you're like no no resident jewish boy there's it's only one guy. yeah no i'm taking no the taking over the part of the island that was more the jewish side of me that was <laughs> you immediately draw a hard line you're like i know it's only me here but i'm gonna declare this half of the island for israel or something. yeah yeah <laughs> I'm just saying, there's no Palestine. Wa- yeah, I was about to say, you throw a walk in, <laughs> rock into the water, like, that's where Palestine can be. And then you look over at the stone crabs, and you're like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a renewable resource I might like. Let's go ahead and throw that rock a little bit further out to the ocean. Yeah, let's go see what those stone crab houses look like. See if they're big enough for a guy like me. Just foraging for stone crabs in the name of Israel on a deserted <laughs> island. It's crazy. Honestly, yeah. maybe it's not that crazy because you're alone by yourself. You're delirious on an island. You're trying to survive. Only nigga you got to talk to is God. You're like, what do you want me to do? Oh, throw that Palestine rock into the fucking ocean? Yeah, I'll do that right now. Fuck one of these stone crabs in the mouth. You know how guys, like, whenever they're trapped on an island, they'll put, like, SOS and tree branches. You just put the Star of David to let the people know from the plane <laughs> who this yeah. really is. I'm having a blast. I just put K period. That's what I spell with my rocks. <laughs> it's like, keep it pushing, bozo. <laughs> no, you just got a Star of David, and then all of a sudden, it's like, Iran has gone to war with a random, <laughs> with a random <laughs> island for no reason. Just because they have a star of David. That'd be an issue, bro. Just a bunch of niggas. But get the fuck down. Get the fuck down. You're like, Jesus Christ. Public. I, I, the, <laughs> I hit the accent, though. If I fucked it up, it'd be Patreon. It's a good accent. If you, if you nail it, it gets to go public. What are they going to say? Oh, he perfectly hit a fucking invading ship's accent? I'm sorry. 
Take it up with the comments, ass fucks. It take, I like how you kept it at invading ships. There's no country <laughs> associated with that. I'm sorry. That's what made Fez from that 70s show such a great character. You knew he was foreign, but they never told you where, and that's what made, it, that's what made the accent okay. That's what made him safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I know he's not allowed where I'm in. That's all, that's all I know. <laughs> you know he's not dating my daughter. <laughs> I like to keep my students unexchanged, if you know what I mean. Exchange That's terrible. Student, can I get a different one? <laughs> yeah. What's the exchange rate on sending your ass back? <laughs> yeah, that, that that is a good that is a good thing to bring up. Can you exchange an exchange student if you don't like them? Can you send them back to a shittier country and collect a little bit of bread? Imagine like being you, like, like, hold on, if you get a European kid and they're and you get them over here, but then you send the European kid to like Venezuela. There's a there's a margin on that. Who can you that? can you imagine just being like, see you later, Sven. Have fun in America for one whole semester, <laughs> and you come back two weeks later. It's like they hated me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, just some some pasty children of the corn, blue eyed Swedish. Yeah, kid. I'm and going they... to the great city of Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> I can't wait to be. I can't wait to make it in Johannesburg. Uh, Just fucking I, sh- I can't wait to see how many friends I make in Atlanta, <laughs> Georgia. And then he just goes, he's like, they hated me. <laughs> I was there for two hours and I heard new words that I didn't know I didn't like. <laughs> Just some fucking Swedish nigga coming back sunburned as fuck. <laughs> like, they hated me. They hated me. I learned how to ride an ATV. <laughs> I I went to this place called Magic City. Fuck! <laughs> just just freaking out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, let's get into a little bit of the survival quiz. Now, before we get into this, I think we're more even in survival tactics than than any of the other quizzes we've ever done. Because it's not all about brute strength. Actually, in all the survivor shows that I watch, are like a lot. All right. Of, what is with this fucking? The, what is this mouth of, breather just eating a pile of grass? Go back up to that. <laughs> What the fuck is that dunce? Can you scroll back up, Andrew? Yeah. That's not foraging. Yeah, he's just eating stuff. He just pulled something up and just smacking it. Yeah. That's how I know you guys wouldn't survive because you think that guy's a dork. That guy's going to live for three more days. That's Jesus like Christ, This is the I most am... fucking protein derivative thing in this lousy fucking island. And me and Tristan are like, that looks like dung. I'm fine. Yeah, that looks like shit. I'm not going to eat it, nerd. And then we throw rocks at him. <laughs> No, I'm gonna go try it, my luck with the bull sharks in the reef. Yeah, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like he was on a first date with a survivalist lady, and she's like, "Yeah, you can eat that," and he's just like, "Oh yeah, I'll eat it." The first I'll time do I did it, he looked just like that. I was like, "All right, ah. just all teeth, somewhat apprehensive, all teeth, <laughs> <laughs> all tastes, teeth, no worries." Tastes like mahi mahi. All right, let's see what... Have you hunted before? Have you been hunting before? Is that the first question? Yeah, have you been hunting before? And Um, What is your answer, Daniel? Because I've been urban hunting. Jesus. What what does that mean? Yeah, that sounds sounds like the opening scene to get out. (laughs) It's a lot the purge. It's a lot more wholesome than you think. I'm just talking about, like, BB guns and pigeons. That's what... That's what... Yeah, like okay. suburban hunting. Yeah. If you guys were thinking about hunting black people, you're the problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, talk, talking more about like shooting a pigeon, feeling bad about it, not being um, like, let's set a trap for others. No. Okay, the, the only hunting I've ever done, so I've done suburban hunting, um, like you said. Now, that I like saying, sub- I say suburban hunting because that sounds like slaughtering white people, and I think that's fine today. Uh, you say urban hunting, which is horrible. Um, I, I killed a squirrel in my backyard once. We well, what they don't with... understand is urban hunting has a very small Keith in front of it, so it's actually Keith urban hunting. We just haven't found him. He's very elusive. I was going to say, urban hunting is uh, spot on. It's exactly what you thought it was. It's a slaughtering of black folks. Suburban hunting is just real estate. That's another word for a realtor. <laughs> <laughs> it's suburban That's hunting. a new show coming to TLC, Suburban, <laughs> suburban Hunting. Suburban Hunter on HGTV at 2 p.m. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've gone prairie dog hunting. Do you know what that is? Do you know what prairie dogs are? They're kind of yeah, like I know. Fucking what do you mean? The meerkat. <laughs> I know what a prairie dog is. Yeah, they're of course. Fucks. <laughs> I just start running back through the intro. Why are you <laughs> so rude? Dog sidekick. Sorry, because they're annoying. What they do is they fuck up crops. So my family in New Mexico 
has a bunch of livestock and, and, and crops and other stuff that they used to grow. And these prairie dogs pop up. They're an invasive species. And they'll just nibble on your shit. They'll kill, like, any small roots that you have, you know, turnip, shit like that. And so what... I only did it when I was really little, like six, seven, eight, nine. Now I understand more what it is. Let me give you the bare bones, and then I'll tell you what it actually is. It's a bunch of guys get shotguns and rifles and sit in the back of a truck and drive through prairie dog fields, which they work similar to meerkats, except they have more sentry. Like, you know how meerkats is just like one nigga that they yeah. chase with the whole village's safety, which is actually a super flawed way to exist. It's yeah. Just one, one guy being like, hope he doesn't get distracted. Yeah, like the whole Paul Revere shit doesn't work, like <laughs> yeah. most of the time. No, prairie dogs send like 30% of their niggas up front because they're always getting picked off. They're natural. You know how some things have like very limited natural predators? Prairie dog yeah. natural predators are like everything. Like just they well, get picked off left Yeah, right. like think if you're a bird, you're just like, oh, there's a hot dog popping out of the ground right down there. I could just swoop <laughs> up and munch that real quick. There's many. They look like mini corn dogs. There's, yeah, they do. There's coyotes. A javelina, if it catches one fucking around, they'll I'll fuck one up. And then rednecks with 12 gauges. And so we'll, we'll roll around in the back of a, like a lifted F-150. Niggas just with like seven, eight rounds. And it's just like six of these things. And they're dumb. They don't move when you get close to them. So we'll just roll up and just, here we go. Blah, blah. And you don't, like, you don't eat them. Prairie dogs You're are, running the block on a prairie dog? I, <laughs> what yeah. a nigga? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I told you we'd be back, Nick. Blah, blah. Yeah, Fucking. you talk all that shit on Instagram, bro. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, where them Twitter fingers out now, nigga? Blah, blah, blah. The, <laughs> say that to all the holes in your house. And your mama crying. There. Your mama crying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why I sent your cousin home in a body bag, nigga. <laughs> Just fucking laying down prairie dog. And, and so you shoot them, and you don't eat them because they're basically rodents, so you just leave them there. And the dogs chew on them is the sad reality of it. So, like, sometimes, like, the uncles and grandpas want to get really good and show they're nice. So they'll shoot them with rifles, which is a lot harder than shooting a prairie dog with a shotgun. But... If you hit a prairie dog with a shotgun, have you ever shot a shotgun, Tristan? Yeah, I've shot a shotgun. I can imagine yeah. that makes a fine prairie dog mist. It, it, just, <laughs> yeah. it just disintegrates this thing in thin air. It's yeah. Awesome. I, was, I was about to say, if you're shooting a prairie dog with a shotgun, you're basically aiming three feet around its house and then digging a hole in the area that, like... <laughs> It's like going into like MS Paint with the eraser tool and just being like, whoop, 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 just taking little divots out. There's no and, chance. And really, what it is is like they they paint it out to be this like we're going out to take care of our crops because it's our livelihood and it affects us financially, which it does. That's completely true. Really, what it is is you pile nine niggas in one F-150, counting the bed, and everyone has Bud Lights and and infantry. It's just a bunch of dudes with guns and beers getting destroyed shooting prairie dogs and then the ones that don't die you send out your dogs there in the back and they just grab the necks and go and just fucking shake it and they fly around it was a wild I can't, thing to see as a child i know that like yeah that's that's pretty much just like i couldn't i couldn't even imagine like properly like taking in all that at one time i'm like oh there's a prairie dog what are we doing oh they're all dead the dogs right. are eating them too i guess this is how life is oh fuck <laughs> And just like you don't have a the, choice because because my dad of course is like hey all the uh, all the men are going prairie dog hunting I mean you can sit here and bake banana bread with the ladies or you can fucking come prairie dog hunt uh, so yeah so, I've been hunting I'll count that halfway I know people are gonna count like buck and fucking all that bullshit I've been hunting. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I've never been hunting all right. I'm going to trust my suburban hunter skills are not actual hunting skills. I can't apply those. All right. How much time have you spent camping in the wilderness? Ooh, a lot. I've actually never gone camping. <laughs> are you fucking serious? You I've like never drugs gone camping. that much and you've never gone camping? <laughs> I've never gone camping. <laughs> Bro, camping's the shit. Uh, so I've done two types of camping. There's camping and there's glamping. So put my yeah. answer down for a lot. Make me a fucking wilderness expert. Uh, so the top one? Yeah, 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 a lot. Uh, there's two. Camping is is where you really go out there and you're like, we're gonna pitch a tent on the ground and we're gonna eat like beans because we only have one skillet and we're just gonna go like fish and walk around and just like drink. That's camping. Glamping, far more fun. Glamping is what I go to twice a year with my uncle and it's fucking lit. We go with like a group of like 
11 niggas that all have big fifth wheels and fifth wheels are the ones that are so big they sit in the back of the truck like the hitch is in the back it's in the fucking bed of the truck so you go with like 11 campers and they all circle up and everyone has quads and four by fours and money yeah glamping is just (laughs) going to the woods with a marriott in yeah basically it's like oh i didn't know the marriott was offering uh in uh you know woodland version yeah, it's basically see how much stuff you can bring to the woods. That's pretty much what glamping <laughs> is. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. Some of this shit has Wi-Fi capability. You can I know. For, it's like you'd bring a PS2. You can pay, oh, yeah, we play video games for surely. There's been multiple times that they yell at us. They're like, you understand we are in nature right now, right? If fucking we're outside, go outside. We're like, but we're in the middle of 2K. And you understand you have a Bacardi in your hand. That's not natural in nature. Shut up. Yeah, it's okay, yeah. (laughs) But your fucking aluminum Yeti is right in place. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) Yeah, you can hatch open any tree trunk and find just like that half a kegger of Heineken, right? That's just anywhere. I'm sure the shower you took this morning is real natural. (laughs) Fuck off my case. (laughs) You've been wiping your butt all day. (laughs) That's clamping though. Clamping lit. We should go. We should go camping at some point as a unit. That'd be a good time. Uh, I feel right, like I want to do the second one. Glamping. That sounds way more fun. Than... Tristan, you need money to glamp. It's a problem. You either have to have <laughs> money or no niggas with money. Neither of which I think you have. It's I, all right. I'm working on both, but like, so really? far neither. Bro, I don't. The campers are like fucking a hundred thousand. That's a hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment. It's fucking. Yeah, Brad nuts. and Shannon are going glamping, dog. You're not. Yeah. Yeah, they're off doing their own shit. I'm just chilling. All right. Have you ever had a first aid or CPR training? I was CPR certified from the age of like nine to fourteen. Yes. Yeah, so that yes. no, it wore off. So say no. There's no, no way you're still right. CPR no, there's certified. Says, there's one that says I used to have those certifications, but it's been a while. Actually, I'm so up to date. I know that we've gone away from uh, mouth breathing. It's straight compressions at this point. Yeah. To uh, staying alive. Oh, I thought you meant like there's no mouth breathing. I'm like, people mouth breathe all the time. You yeah, can't yeah, control yeah. that. No, you don't do like the traditional mouth to mouth thing anymore. Now you just do staying alive on your chest and I put my cock on your uvula. <laughs> yeah. So now, so I look weird when I'm making out with the st- with the with the person di- choking. So I look like yeah. the weird guy. It turns turns out your penis is like an oxygen valve. Just stick that thing right in there and hold hold your breath. Do, it imagine right. imagine someone like passes out and they're like choking. You're like, don't worry, I know CPR, and you just start like laying in missionary position on top of them, just being like, I fucking love you, like forehead to forehead. And he's like, I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, so good. Tristan, I'm gonna assume you don't have those certifications. Um, I have a food handler's card. I don't know <laughs> if that is the proper certifications. <laughs> but I have a GED and a food handler's card, baby. I can fucking rule this world. I have a GED and a food handler's <laughs> That's the same. Thank you barely surviving in the real <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. At least I'm almost 25. (laughs) Don't worry. I'm almost off my parents' health insurance. (laughs) I've started warming up for not having my parents' health insurance by not going to the doctor. (laughs) I'm not even trying to be an asshole. That is the maybe funniest thing I've ever heard you say. I have a GED. Let's see what we can do with that. Make that the title of the episode. Make that the no GED and a food handle. I can make this shit work, pal. <laughs> I was at rock bottom. All I had was a GED and a food handle card and some spunk. <laughs> In a can do attitude. <laughs> I love you, Tristan. That's good. All right. How confident would you be in identifying edible plants? Is a bacon plant available? Is there... Actually, yeah, not... I would gamble Did I stumble across a cheeseburger tree? And not the lethal cheeseburger tree, the non-lethal cheeseburger tree. Are you living in the cloudy with a chance of meatballs universe? I'm hoping. I'm hoping. (laughs) I'm going for Willy Wonka edible dirt. Yeah, what? There's a leak in the boat. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to say I don't know plants well enough. Unless it's visibly cannabis, I don't know the plant. <laughs> I, was yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, could, I could harvest an eighth and I could eyeball that. No problem. <laughs> Absolutely no issue. Now, arugula, and that's, I'm lost all the way out. Um, I can't tell if it's parsley or cilantro, so I don't trust it. Here, what are the options? <laughs> my, my knowledge is very limited, but I'll take the risk to eat something. That's my answer for sure. I would, I would err on the, because obviously, if, if, am I by myself in this situation? Yes. Fuck. Okay, so there's no use in trying to alpha it Dude, out. there's this great survivor show, you which is like. It. You know you would just avoid it. Dude, there's this great Survivor show that just I'm thinking about right now on Netflix. I forgot the name of it, but it's like basically where they take you into Alaska and they like it's a bunch of people all surviving on their own and like whoever wins like the battle royale of whoever is last gets a hundred thousand dollars, whoever can stay out there the latest. And it was this chick who was so confident. She walked in, she oh, was like Me and my friend me and my coworkers are talking is it called alone? Yes, it is alone. Yeah, me and my coworkers were talking about that. Bro, yeah. being isolated is the hardest part. Of be- you could have all the food in the world and movies and, like, whatever. That would only prolong it. If you had Wi-Fi but you couldn't, like, actually talk to other people, that would only prolong it for about maybe a year, a year and a half before you then still, like, went crazy. You always go crazy. Always. There's no way around that. If you have no one to talk to. Oh, yeah. Like, dude, I re- no, but on an episode of Alone, there's this chick. She's like, I think you've seen the episode where she's like, oh, I'm a, I'm an herbologist. I scavenge for berries. I know which berries are good and bad. And then it just hard cuts to her in a night vision camera just being like, I don't think those berries were good. And then <laughs> it's like... Now like, that I think about it, those were uh, more black than blue. Now that, uh, yeah. I, do, now that I do recall. <laughs> I'm thinking on it a little bit more, and I don't think those berries were good. And then it's just like blurred out diarrhea sounds. <laughs> I did get low gluttonous. I was full already when I ate all the ones that were still connected to the plant. I lied you know to myself what? and I said I wouldn't eat the six on the ground, but I ate the six on the ground. I think those are the problem. <laughs> did you know what? I think I ate too much, and I need to get rid of some of this st- stuff in my stomach. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking let it out. No, those are always the people that fail. The people that are like, um, I specialize in being outside and wheatgrass. And you're like, yeah, you're going to fail. You're used to socialization. You're used to going to a coffee shop or a Jamba Juice or a fucking whatever and getting your wheatgrass shake and talking to yogis or whatever the fuck. Give me a nigga who's fucking. First of all, you don't eat. Eating is the hardest thing to find in those dumb fucking shows. It's the fat niggas that live the longest all the time. If you go out and you can't have access to food, you got about 17 minutes before your body starts eating itself and you die. Yeah. Andrew like I would make it till Christmas. I would need like a regular access of granola bars. <laughs> if, it, if, it interested, if we all got dropped in different remote locations, me and you would be out like foraging for food and doing this and doing that. Andrew would sit down like Spongebob and Patrick in the conch episode and just crisscross applesauce and be like, I need to conserve my energy. I have enough fat until the winter. And he would just sit there and Who set up most of this set today, bitch? What the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) I'm saying if we were on a survival episode. This is a survival episode. We're fucking dying right now. And you're in an advantage. You have the most fuel to burn. Fuck you. That's a good way to look Fuck at it. Fuck you. Tristan's starting the tank with his gas light on. <laughs> <laughs> he gets dropped with his gas I'm, light on. It's I've tough. been running on E. <laughs> I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm like, uh, well, we might make it to the next gas station. We also could get stranded in the middle of the desert. It's really a flip of a coin. Uh, uh, have you guys ever built a fire without matches or, or a lighter? Dude, what am I, God? No. <laughs> that is true. Honestly, part of me was thinking, I'm like, do I have the power of lightning? No, it's never <laughs> happened to me yeah. before. Two questions popped in my mind right there. One, am I an Eagle Scout? No, no, I'm not. Two, am I Jesus Christ himself? Uh, maybe not, but possibly. I don't know, but probably not. <laughs> Less Three, likely. Am I one of those Avatar The Last Airbender Firebender guys? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Do I try Very the Spider-Man speci- thing at least once a month? Yes. Very yes, specifically, do. not the Firebender guys from the M. Night Shyamalan version where they have to use other fire. Can I harness my own fire? <laughs> Wait, they had to do that? Yeah, it was dumb. Yeah. Ew, Dude, it was the Spider-Man worst movie. With web shooters, it takes it out. All right, do you guys uh, carry, a, carry a pocket utility tool of some kind? Gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ray gun. God. <laughs> yeah. 
No, I carry nothing. Just these fucking fifth try me pussies. I wish you would. Dude, honestly, if someone said like, if someone came up to me and they're like, oh, I have a Swiss Army knife on me. Even if I needed it, I'd be like, why? Like, <laughs> they, would, they would get shit on instinct. No, because here's the thing. I used to think Swiss Army knives were cool. Nothing on them you need an everyday knife. Do you, because the knife on there is essentially just a short butter knife. Do you need toast butter? No, you don't. Maybe an English muffin? Probably not. Oh, you need a cork. You need a bottle opener. You need a pocket bottle opener? Take your ass to AA. There's a fucking, there's a screwdriver on there. What do you, Bob the Builder? You just walk around all day fixing shit on the public transit? No, you don't. Sit the fuck down. Take your do, your stupid ass Swiss Army knife and shove it up your ass. Maybe that's what it's for. That's and a also, feature. It's a bug And bug, also, a toothpick, a toothpick that you're supposed to take out, put in your mouth, and then put back into this thing. It's Wait, like there's a toothpick on there? Yeah, most Swiss Army knives have like little toothpicks that you could take out and like get with your teeth but it's like so gross why would you use that and then put it back in your fucking swiss army knife just to be like just so i know that's the thing that goes in my mouth that's in my <laughs> pocket <laughs> that may have sold me on the swiss army knife that one standalone object right there there's a basically a toothpick holder just I'm carry it to- just mu- carry a toothpick <laughs> okay yeah you try holding onto a piece of lint see if you lose that throughout the fucking day you know, you're right to keep track of i have to tooth- bring my tooth uh, my toothpick briefcase that i carry around <laughs> everywhere <laughs> <laughs> kind of. That's all I'd use a Swiss Army knife for is a toothpick briefcase. All right, this yeah. next question is tough because if you guys couldn't build a fire, I don't see this one working. Could you create a Can water? You bend water? <laughs> <laughs> Could you create a water filtration system from natural elements? The fact that they say natural elements, I'm already fucked. Okay, yeah, science can't do that. What the fuck? <laughs> Can you? Okay, let's let me brainstorm for like three seconds. I've watched enough Bear Grylls. The closest I think I could get is you. Okay, if I'm completely stranded and I have My no... first thing that came to my mind was boiling my own piss, which yeah, I don't then, think is going to help me. Thing. But, but then, you don't have a fire. You can't make a fire. You don't even have I anything know. to contain your piss, Nick. What is that going <laughs> <laughs> You're just pissing on sticks. Yeah, <laughs> that was my I mean, first thought, too. It was like, oh, yeah, I'll just spawn a jug. I'll use that jug to catch my piss. I'll pour that piss jug into the skillet. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I have none of these things, and I don't know how to make a fire. Now I'm dead. I'm just dead. Every one of these scenarios, I'm like, nope, not even kind of close. I think the closest I've seen, like that, I could probably is like you go next to a river and then you dig a hole until water comes up. I saw that in that movie, uh, that animated movie, Dinosaurs, and I was like, Where I are could you do at that. Narnia? <laughs> <laughs> Ground clean water? Just yeah, yeah. Up? What the no, fuck? No, no, if you dig close enough to a river, if you dig deep enough, the water will like seep in through the yo bed. Pocahontas. Why you- chill, yeah. why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone should alert the continent of Africa that if they just dug a little bit, literally yeah, if they dug deeper, there would be something. I, yeah. I saw this from a dinosaur animated movie, dog. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm like, most of my facts, I'm like, dude, if I can't get water to boil, it's like I'm just drinking salt water until I go crazy. That's pretty much my <laughs> yeah, my goal. That's, that's All right, so I'm it. saying... You got no, neither of you guys have any idea how to do this. Well, I'd probably drink my piss first. That seems like at least a more like a beneficial return on investment than uh, drinking. Salt listen, water. I'm sitting here and I've been drinking my piss since the moment I got to this dumb island, just because I got some peace and quiet. So I'm finally <laughs> no somewhere one's judge where, you. where yeah. I can drink my own piss. You're doing it like Rasputin. You're like, I've been having to take shots of my own piss for the last fucking three, four years. Are you ready for this? Right. No you, more. I, uh, I brought how, a camel back. Now I'm just going to fill it up with my pee-pee. How would you guys rate your physical strength? I'm a very strong person. I'm not a weightlifter or anything, but I have a decent amount of strength. I'm not a total weakling, but I wouldn't call myself strong either. Honestly, I'm pretty weak. You want to answer for each other on this one? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say right? I'm not a total weakling, but I'm not calling myself strong either. All right, that's a fair one. I'll give you that. I wrestled just all right. You've never wrestled me. You've attacked me. <laughs> I've never it's never been a one, two, three wrestle. We've both consented. It's like we're wrestling now and Daniel has the jump. Hold on. I know we're doing a survival thing. Is that what you think? What? You've never we've never had like a sanctioned on, wrestling bout? No. <laughs> Is that what you what? think though? Are you what? saying head on without like? No, surprise? no, no. You could, you could, you could be the guy who says one, two, three, go. For all I give, wait. Is that actually what you think? Are you saying that <laughs> I think I can participate in a wrestling match between the two of us? No, participating means just be there. I think you could do that. 
Do you think you could like if you wanted to move left, you could even get that done? I think I could do that. I think I could I I could surprise you. I bet I'm slippery. I'm more slippery than you think. Are you being actually Cuz uh, cuz we have a lot of content to shoot when you come down here. I'll put a lick on you for your birthday. I'll fuck you up for your birthday if you want. That's not a very good birthday present. That's a but... solid birthday present. No, that's more of a present for you. We need to do your punishment. You haven't done the ice bucket fucking thing yet, so... That is true. We do have to do his punishment. I vote cock and ball torture. <laughs> I vote BDSM. Uh, um, I, I vote calling off the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> All or nothing football coin. If it's tails, you call off the wedding. <laughs> uh, I'm very... What if, what if very, Taylor... Very no, different. this is it. Do you I'm have not a weightlifter a- or anything, but I have a decent amount of strength. You're not an Olympic weightlifter. No, You're no, not no, the no. strongest guy at the gym. No, no, no. You're no, not the, the strongest guy at the gym. You do the ellipticals and you know it. No, not even close. The I just put up 225 for 10 yesterday. The oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm in the one percent of people for strength wise. You know this, right? Big, very strong person. Big body. Six three, 210 pounds. Move a little bit away. I hate that I have to fucking. I hate that I have to do this. I Why is it that? Just, first I off, I could just put strong person. You guys will go. Yeah, obviously. Look at the way he's filling out that shirt right Daniel, now. Daniel, you're Clearly, six one. You're, you're six dumb. one, maybe. <laughs> Tristan, you're six two. And I'm you know closer it. to six four than six one. Shut up. I'm closer to seven feet than you are three. <laughs> all right. All right. Which phrase describes your health? <laughs> Dude, I, when I was doing this like a pretense, I saw sick and I almost fucking shat myself laughing. We're literally, uh, we're pretty much each individually one of these. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Out of shape, healthy, sick, and, and fit as a fiddle. Uh, I mean, none of us is that because I, I do too much stuff. Yeah, I'd say you're healthy. Yeah, I'd, I'm, say, I'd say I'm I'll, fit as a fiddle. I'll take the L and say I'm sick. Yeah, no. There, I'd say the there is I, no I, debate. No, I'd rather I, quit. The only reason why you'd be described fit as a fiddle, Andrew, is because that's something someone would say to like ease your mind at a barbecue restaurant. Like yeah, it'd be I'm, like I'm fit as a griddle. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it just being like, baby, you're fit as a fiddle. Finish that second plate, and you'd be like, all right. Yeah, bro. All right. How do you uh, generally deal with stress? Cutting. Stress tends to stick with me for days. I just try to keep moving. I move on uh, from it very quickly. It can haunt me for a while, but eventually I move past it. Vampire, what do you got? Um, I just try to keep moving. Okay. Uh, I move on from it real quickly, I guess would be my answer. Probably faster than I should move on from it. Been my yeah, answer. you... You fucking don't process it. That's not. It's not moving on from it. You don't process it at all. Yeah, I just. I pretty much go with. Yeah, I pretty much go with my first emotion, and then I'm like, well, this is what everyone's getting. Hope it's correct. And then Tristan, what was yours? I say uh, I just try to keep moving. Okay. But the thing is, Daniel, you're not like I just try to keep it moving. You're in a stressful situation, but somehow you're like just completely oblivious to it. Like everyone else is stressed around you, but you're just stupid and chill. And you're like, I wonder what everyone's stressed out about. It's like the thing that we're doing. And you're like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, it's bad. You know what's weird is because you may, you pay me out to be this aggressive dictator. But then you also go, yeah, you're pretty much just chill all the time. And it's very infuriating. You got to pick a lane. No, you can you can be both. Your chill is during times of stress, and your anger is during times of peace. It makes no sense. That's what you need in a leader. It gets people going. That's not true. Yeah, that actually that's completely true. If you're on a losing football team, or if the guys played bad, you don't talk shit to them when the guys played bad. You console them. You're like, "We'll get this turned around. We'll figure it out." When we're winning, if we're on a four-game win streak, you better believe I'm up your ass. I'm like, let's fucking. Hey, are we gonna, we're not slacking. We got to start uh, kind of firing through these a little bit more. All uh, right. No, yeah, it's because we're we're like 15 Jeez, minutes. Thanks, mom. No, we're like 15 minutes out, and we still have like fucking 20 questions. left. <laughs> Holy shit! There's so many questions. How big of a fucking quiz did you choose? I assumed we were gonna start the quiz at 25. All right, well, let's zoom through these then. I guess. Uh, have you ever watched a survival TV show? Uh, duh. Yeah, a bunch. 
uh, yes. to be specific. Mostly, mostly mine are like kitchen survival. So it's like you have to survive the high stakes cutthroat kitchen. <laughs> it's not. It's not really like on the edge of a precipice or like that's a mesa. A, that's one of the Daniel Tosh bits that got me into stand up, and I listened to when I was playing football. Is the he does a bit about survivor they like bring people to places where uh people already live yeah <laughs> they just take some you white live in a third world country yeah people are like we've been here for fucking six generations Can it's like oh in pizza? my country this is a game yeah 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 that was... <laughs> yeah yeah uh have you had formal have training you had any in formal sur- training with survival skills um uh, I've been to a number of schools on survival. Duh. Who the fuck would ever say that? Only survival you... skill is... I could take apart most like like low-caliber guns and clean them, put them back together again. No way That's what you in think, buddy. fucking so Christ. They come to your houses. Sorry, and no... Just... In no way in Christ can you put together you I'm I'm confident you can take apart a gun. I don't think you can put one together. My brother wore a fucking belt buckle the size of your head to prom. You don't think I know how to you don't think I was raised? I was raised. Oh, so with a you got oh so you got contact away, gun? You got contact like, gun, Daniel? You got a little no. contact redneck from all the redneck in the room? This is, honestly, this is right up the survival thing. From like the way that you prevent kids from fucking with guns is you take away the curiosity. This is fucking, here we go, Republican bridge get. The, the way you, you prevent kids from fucking with guns, you take away the curiosity. So from like a very young age, my parents were like, these are guns. This is what they are. Let's go shoot them so you're not curious about what that's like. Let's learn how to clean them, take them apart. Proper safety, proper, you know. It's so funny that Daniel's bragging about like shooting guns since he was a kid. He's the only one that didn't hit a target when we went to the gun range. Yeah, you're the only one that didn't hit a target too. You know, it's I had, like, it's like I had s- never shot a gun before, and I had better marksmanship than you did. You know, it's like speaking a language. If you fucking don't speak it for a while, you, you forget how to I've do it. I've never spoke it, and I said a paragraph. I tried to say yeehaw for the first time, and I said yee hoo, and my dad was like, "What the hell is that?" Yeah, right, and so- turns out Brody is fluent. <laughs> yeah, nope, not at all Brody's for either. John Wick. <laughs> oh, yeah, Brody Wick, yeah. Doug. Yeah, not no. at all. How good do you uh, how good do you think you would be at building a shelter? Um, uh, let's take a look at the background of my podcast studio well, currently. Well, hold I on, don't hold think on. set the set the set the terrain for this question. What terrain are we in for this question? All right, let's say woodlands. I'm fucked. Any answer, I'm fucked. Okay, uh, and here's the here's the answers. Odds are that it would fall down the first day. I've never done it before, but I'm guessing that it would be pre- I'd be pretty good at it. Done it a few times. I'd probably be pretty decent at it. I've built a lot of shelters. I'm great at it. Honestly, I'm saying yeah. Odds are it'd fall down the first day, and I'd have to like learn from that. I have no prior shelter building experience. Yeah, odds are that it would fall down the first day. Bro, honestly, that's the most impressive shit to me when you watch those survival shows, and and like. People are actually, they're like, I'm an Eagle Scout. I understand, like, the very first thing you do is build a fucking sustainable shelter and a fire. Those are two things you immediately get going. You're like, dudes are using, like, they take a fucking a branch and, like, peel it in half and make a knife and then use the knife to cut fibers and use those fibers to make it. It's like, fucked up. I don't. I'd be sleeping it, under the best looking tree, but it's a pretty thick tree right here. I'll sleep under this. Hopefully, no. Rain I know. Gets there. I'm digging a sleeping hole. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Just fighting off spiders and shit. Yeah. Uh, how, I'm, how well would you uh, be able to deal with extreme heat? I wouldn't be happy about it, but I'd gut it out. I'd stay in the shade as much as possible. I'd be totally miserable. I hate being hot. I'm very comfortable with temperatures when temperatures get hot. That's the one thing we all excel in. We're Phoenicians, baby. Very yeah. I'm not very... It's Don't not vi- say Phoenician. <laughs> Dude, that makes us sound so much fancier than we are. We are the Phoenicians, and we're here to fuck your offspring. <laughs> yeah. It's no, Phoenician think- sounds like somewhere... It sounds like we're from somewhere called Finance, not Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it sounds like, oh, Finance. You've never heard of a Phoenician? It's like, no, we're from fucking Phoenix. Like with an F. Phoenix. Yeah, well, I guess no one's comfortable in it, but we're from here, so we're as, as used to it as you can be. All yeah, right, I'd so. say I wouldn't be happy, but I'd get it out. Okay. Uh, would you consider yourself a to be a p- patient person? 
Hey, you want to answer for each other on this one? Um, I would say uh, I definitely struggle with patience, but I'm getting better at it. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, just from me being behind old people in Whole Foods lines and being like, I bet I could kill you with my hands. <laughs> my answer would be uh, I'm a very patient person, but I don't take action until the time's right. I, I, would, I was going to put you as a, I'm a pretty patient person, but I definitely prefer to move things along. Okay. As long as the answer is not, I tend to get angry. No, no, no. <laughs> I was going to put that for Tristan. Oh, I would say, yeah, now that I see it, probably definitely prefer to move things along. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I'll, go, I'm, I'll go one a little bit below you. Honestly, yours, though, for survival is probably better. Honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I bet I get, I tend to get angsty quick. Yeah. I do. I have no time for people. Trust me, Tristan, I already changed your answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get pretty testy. Can you think logically even under challenging conditions? Yes. Uh, well, seeing how Daniel forgot a lot of the equipment on the first try, uh, I'm going to put not a pretty good job. Seeing as how Daniel was paid to be a Division One quarterback, I would say he's pretty good at thinking logically under challenging conditions. Yeah, how much you do you were think paid on the past sidelines, tense. dog? <laughs> Actually, <You're>... a lot. <laughs> you try decoding a nine. F George Washington peanut butter gravy left wing right, and you're like, uh, okay. Let me uh, okay, let I, let I, me I can forget this until the next play comes up. Yeah, I, bet I bet he throws the ball. I bet he throws the ball. I bet. And then you have to convert that into sign language that means just as much as the first sentence I just said. And you're like, okay, uh, here we go. You're like grabbing your balls and tickling your ear and shit. Um, I would I say fairly, fairly all right. Thank you. I'm going to put that one. I'd say I do a pretty good job at staying rational. But I have my limits. That is fair. I think we'll do there it is on to speed run it. We'll say what we think and then you just... Tag it to the one you think is. How many do we have left? Uh, like six, seven. Have oh, you that's ever not slept bad. outside under the stars before? Duh, a bunch. No. I've never. I'm afraid bugs would get in my ears. You never made like a Ford out back? Nah, never. Which one did you want, Daniel? Mm, yeah, I love to sleep out under the stars. I did that maybe like a month and a half ago. Slept outside. <laughs> what, Taylor was mad at you? No, we drove off. Uh. And just yeah, I got relegated from the couch. Just like, fuck out of here. <laughs> You're sleeping on the patio. What's the longest uh, that you've gone without eating before? <clears throat> 30 minutes. <laughs> What's the longest you've gone without eating before? Um, I'd probably say I've lasted little. I'd say, like, I've gone food for a day and a half. Are you serious? Yeah. Was that, like, during a depressed period, or was that just. Normal? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, big espresso. Uh, your girl was threatening to uh, off herself. So yeah, I, was, I had more pressing matters. Yeah. Damn, this is gonna sound like real first world issues, but I don't even think I've gone almost a full day without food ever. I always at least get one meal. Always, even my brokest. When I was like, bank account was negative was down like the last like 10 bucks in my pocket. I always made sure that I found a way. Whether I was stealing my roommate's food or not, I always found a way to make sure that I got my protein in. All right, Tristan, what was yours again? Um, uh, I've gone without food for a day and a half. Okay. That's wild. It's not that wild. It's not a crazy. I've done Unintentional, that. though, without food? I could see it if you're like, I'm fasting or you're Muslim. or you No, know, I was just poor. But you can't finagle food from somewhere. At that point, I would go in. I'm not above it. I've gone straight up into grocery stores and just eaten food and then left. <laughs> and then just I left. didn't have a car, so I couldn't. God, that's tough. Yeah. yeah. All right. Which strategy for conserving is conserving energy would you use, will you use? Read them. Um, uh, I'll I'd conserve energy during the middle of the day and do the bulk of my activity at dawn and, at dawn and dusk. I'm going to pace myself as to not... Get my heart rate up too high at any point. I'm going to sleep a lot. I'm not going to conserve my energy. I'm going all out to get out of there. That's I'm going to sleep a lot. Yeah, I'm the opposite. I'm if That's my problem in my real life, too, is I wake up early. I'm a morning person. I wake up early, and I'm like, let's fucking get after it. It's probably from sports and stuff. You wake up, and you're like, here we go. It's where we attack the day. It's where we're working out. This is where like you, you start a good start of the day, sets up a good middle of the day, sets up a good end of the day. 
But then by the end of the day, you're gassed because you're like, wow, I just fucking blew my entire load by like 2.30 p.m. And now I just want to shoot myself. Yeah. Back when I was in like Phoenix with you working out and shit early in the morning and just be I was thinking, I'm like, yeah, I could do that schedule. And then I'm like, oh, I was taking so much Ritalin every single day just to keep my eyes open. So I'm just like, all right. So maybe that wasn't the best. You have but, to live in it. If you don't, if you don't live in it, it takes like literally, it takes two months to get used to of like waking up early, and then you're like, I don't know. But, all right, how would you deal with extreme cold conditions? I'd struggle, struggle mightily in cold conditions, but I'll keep moving. I'm not a fan of those conditions, but I'd survive. I hate being cold. It's like my body just shuts down. I'd figure out a way to stay warm. I will figure out a way to stay warm. My piss is always hot. I'm out here fucking. No, I'm just kidding. I'm a pussy I'd, when it comes to cold. I'd say. I'm not a fan of cold conditions, but I'd survive. But it would suck so bad. Dude, you guys literally should have seen me. When I was in Minnesota, I've never felt like more of a drug addict in my life. I was outside of this because it was freezing. It was literally like six degrees outside. And I, all I had was like real weed because I ran out of my pen. And I had to smoke outside. And I was like, well, this is the only option. So I'm sitting outside in like, I don't know, like six, seven degrees and just like a bomber. Like after and just the like, show. <gasps> yeah, and like my and like my hot guy attire, like trying to wear like layers but make the layers look form fitting, and I'm just sitting out there, just like Jesus fucking Christ. Just oh like, yeah, dude, it sucks. Why do I need weed like this? How oh yeah, you, I, I didn't smoke do? for oh, like a day. What were you saying? I didn't smoke for like a day and a half out here because it was so fucked up outside. Where I was just like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, like there's absolutely no chance. I'm not going out there. Fuck off. <laughs> Well, what you should saying? you do if you come across a grizzly bear? I'd run away fast as I could. I'd make a lot of noise and make myself look as big as I could. I'd curl into a pole, protecting my vital organs. I'd climb the nearest tree. Tristan, I'd you're going orb, and I know this. Look that nigga in his eye and tell him, you pull the trigger if you want to. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't imagine like a situation where I get out of that in a really cool way. Um, so I'd say my first thing would be run. Yeah, I'd probably run away. As long as soon as it started like going towards me, and I'm like, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. All right, Daniel, what was yours? I mean, I honestly think that's everyone's natural instinct. I know they tell you to do other shit, but it's like if I see a grizzly bear, I know it can run faster than me, but I'm gonna. Can it cut faster than me? Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bro, you trying to hit her? <laughs> You're trying to hit a fucking no, bear with a spin like, move? You You're trying to hit a bear with a fucking spin move, I, ima- I imagine you I'm running up field. to a bear doing, There's like, a... the shimmy knee thing, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine I blow a third ACL running away from a black bear? And just then just get like... eaten by a bear? That sucks so bad. All right, do you tend to make plans or just wing it? Make plans. All day. Uh, oh, big playing guy. Huge playing guy. Tristan, I'd you say go I, first. Uh, you know, for I, a fact, you're, I just figure things out as they go on. Uh, yeah, I, I, I figure shit. things out. I'm let the bird land first and then see what it's doing once it gets over there. Yeah, I'm going to figure things out on the go. All right. How would you describe your attitude in general? Read them. <laughs> I'm the eternal optimist. I find the silver lining in pretty much everything. I'm definitely a pessimist. It's pretty common for me to get negative. I tend to stay positive through most things. I can get pretty negative, especially when I'm tired. That one, that's Tristan. I can get pretty negative, especially when I'm tired. I would say I'm the opposite. I'm the eternal optimist. I'll find the silver lining in pretty much everything. All right. Do you disagree with that? No, I was going to put I tend to stay positive through most things. For me? Yeah. Uh, What time of day will you do the bulk of your activity? I think we already did this morning Morning. for Daniel. Yeah. Uh, When Uh, it gets to it for Tristan. uh, Dusk. (laughs) Dusk. I'd say dusk. (laughs) Dusk. (laughs) You even move like a vampire, dude. All right. How would you do with extremely wet conditions? Great baby has dog weather. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I stay in that wet, bro. I stay in that cut. I've been uh, living in that slip, bro. They used to say that when it would rain and I was playing in Seattle. They'd be like, this is dog weather. I'd be like, no, this blows for everybody. I can't throw a fucking book. All right, Tristan, you? Um, uh, I'd say once I get a shelter, I'll figure out I'd be happy. Well, I don't really care I'm about the wet. 13% boss. Uh, I do pretty all right in wet weather. 
I don't uh, mind being wet wet. What is your first priority in a survival situation? Water, fire, food, assess immediate danger. Overthrow immediate village. Is that it's conquer it's, land. Pillage. Red sea. Is it I'm looking for pillage. My answer is pillage. And if not pillage, I'll take plunder. Yeah. yeah. Is Shanghai an answer? <laughs> Uh, right, what you guys got? Uh, I'd say f- assess my any immediate danger, then work my way around that. All right, Daniel. Well, now that you said that, that's obviously the right answer. But no, if, it's fucking water, Doug. Yeah, what are you talking about? No, because that's the you're not just gonna go like fucking uh, Tom Cruise sprint through a forest. You're gonna assess. The yeah, you're gonna assess the danger. What are you gonna ask? Are you gonna ask the bear for water? <laughs> yeah, like you're gonna kind of figure no, stuff I'm out. Him t- I'm gonna follow him to the water. You should be like, okay, I'm on a desolate island. <laughs> I'm, running without, like, I'm gonna get on all fours and make him think I'm another bear. Yeah, start doing those 90 degree arm runs where it's just like, it's, oh yeah. Uh, they were trying to describe a bear crawl. I was like, you fucking dork. It's called a bear crawl. Uh, no. What is going to be your main signaling strategy? Getting to the highest ground and waving my arms, smoke, fire, finding a reflective surface to direct a plane I will overhead. light the island on fire, and someone will notice eventually. I'm going to make that thing a hot ember. All right, so you're going fire. Daniel, what you got? You're for sure going to go to the highest point and be like, dude, I conquered this island, and you're going to save me. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to obviously see the DBG flag flying from the highest point on the island and be like, oh, there's a real nigga who needs help. Let's go see what he's talking about. If right, anything, so they're going to see it and just be like, he doesn't need help. He's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to fly right over here. Like, this thing is obviously fine. All right, so which one you got? Um, I'd fire. Uh, yeah, find the highest service for sure. Oh, wait, man. I think that's the, the best one. All right. Uh, when will you drink most of your water? Um, I'd say when I wake up in the morning. Actually, whenever I'm thirsty. I'm just going to yeah. fuck up. I know it's literally going to be like whenever I'm at my thirstiest, I'll take a sip. I'm going to say, yeah, one thing, any like just that's like survival 101. You're like, you only drink when you're thirsty. And even then, you push it a little bit. All right. What does stop stand for in, survive, in a survival setting? <laughs> Right, what the fuck? percent chance. Here we go. Read them. Uh, stop, think, observe, plan, stand tall on principles, start yep. to openly practice, sure to over, oh, um, overly prepare. Um, I'm going to say think, uh, stop, think, observe, plan. Yeah, it's obviously the ones with the commas in it. For sure. Sh- sh- stop, think, <laughs> observe, plan. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say that one. <laughs> I want to say stand tall on principles because that's what I live my life by, but that's definitely. <laughs> the the fucking Amazon's like I don't want to hear about Trump when I get down there, bro. That's not. Are you guys, you guys ready for the results? Yeah, yeah. All right, for Daniel, let's do Daniel first. Come on, come on. A few days. <laughs> Damn it! Fuck! <laughs> I'll make it a week. No, let's be honest. You aren't gonna you aren't gonna last very long uh, out there in the wild. From your answers, it seems you have picked very little in the way of survival skills over the years. Uh, you lack the physical strength, pff, debatable, and stamina needed to grind. Sure, this is mine. Yeah, this is yours. Okay, uh, stamina needed to grind <laughs> out an existence in nature. You really need a rescue party to find you soon. Fuck. All right, let's see All right, mine. And for Tristan, come on. Same thing. Few days. Yes, that's what I wanted. That's fine. Damn it! I was hoping it was going to be like immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so, Minutes. So you, so you mean if I get stranded yeah. on Monday, I'm dead on Thursday? That's fuck. That doesn't even make any sense. You I don't mean, even make it to the Saturday recording. It doesn't even say I get fucking d- destroyed by a saber tooth or anything. It's just like <laughs> you just die from just just being out there, like from being a bitch. You're- Good game. Come again next time. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's do the patrons and let's call it a day. All right. Just shout out the new guys in the last month. I think uh, I want to shout out my dad on the Patreon, who I think his name is fucking your mom. I've, I, yeah, it is. A, I banged your mom. Oh, I banged your mom, <laughs> which right. is factually <laughs> accurate. All right. So we got um, we got out. number one, baby boy, yep. daddy, Hayden. Yep. Thank you, Hayden. Yep. Shout him out. That is my biological father. 
Billy Silver. Shout out to Adam J for not unsubscribing yet. That's a real fucking right. writer. <laughs> and we know he needs that dollar. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Carl, uh, I will go only go gay for Kavichka Kav Kavart. Oh, it's, Kavichka, a, it's a soccer player. Kavart. Yeah, it's uh, Kavichka Kavartselia. Oh, I thought that was Hebrew. No, it's a it's a it's an Italian <laughs> soccer player. Oh, is that All a guy right. or a girl? That's a dude. All It'd right, be funnier funny. if it was a women's soccer player and she looked so much like a dude that he was, said he would go gay for her. Yeah, and then all rounded out by Brad in parentheses. I banged your mom bowling, which is fucking, which is solid. Join the final stop Patreon. We appreciate you for watching. Tell a friend about the cast. Oh, dude, Diddy changed his name too. Diddy one v one me. <laughs> no, that's Trevin Muncy. That's Trevin Muncy. Oh, <laughs> oh there's shit. The, there's beef amongst the patrons. Trevor, uh, or Trevin. 1v1 Diddy. I'd love to see it. We'll, we'll do it on the internal affairs. Join the, join the Patreon. Uh, um, wow. There's, oh no, someone took a Bud Light. I'm four Bud Lights in. <laughs> Shout out to Dylan Mulva Mulvaney. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> hey, join the Final Stop Patreon. It's lit. We got dozens of hours of content. It's a whole bunch of shit. And if you're really liking the podcast, if you like it a lot, you can join the internal affairs. It's 10 bucks a month. But you get hours, and I mean hours, of the rawest form of the final stop. Join the podcast.